Hello everyone. I am Eric from Invensys Learning. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Today, let us talk about one of the very interesting topics, what is Lean Six Sigma? The very first question, that pops up when you start thinking about getting a Lean Six Sigma certification is, what exactly is Lean Six Sigma? What is a reasonable definition, that can give me an introduction to this discipline without going into details? So, without further delay, let's get started with today's agenda. We will begin this session by understanding, what is Lean Six Sigma? Once you get to know about Lean Six Sigma, we will see, why do we need Lean Six Sigma? And then, we will get to know, what is Lean? Post that, we will try to understand, what is Six Sigma? And then, we will discuss the eight types of Lean Wastes. Moving on, we will discuss, how can Six Sigma act as a measure of process performance? And then, we will go through the methodologies in Six Sigma, along with examples. And finally, we will end this session, by understanding the benefits of Lean. I hope you are clear with the agenda. Now, let's get started. So, what is Lean Six Sigma? Before we understand what is Lean Six Sigma, or how this term Lean Six Sigma came into the picture, let us understand the two terms it comprises. Which are Lean and Six Sigma? Six Sigma is all about reducing variations or enhancing the process control. Whereas, Lean drives out the waste that is non-value-added activities, and promotes work standardization. Not all manufacturing activities in a factory add value to the product, right? These activities are referred to as waste. Because, they do not directly enhance the value of the product. As the name itself implies, Six Sigma combines both Lean and Six Sigma, to utilize the concept from both the processes. Lean Six Sigma is a process improvement methodology, designed to eliminate problems, remove waste and inefficiency, and improve working conditions to provide a better response to customers' needs. It combines the tools, methods, and principles of Lean and Six Sigma into one popular and powerful methodology for improving your organization's operations. Now, let's go through some of the basics for Lean Six Sigma. Lean Six Sigma methodology is effective. The two methods complement each other working together to identify errors and waste more efficiently than using just one method. Lean accelerates Six Sigma. Lean provides an extensive set of tools for improving manufacturing productivity. Lean Six Sigma helps organizations of all sizes in any industry increase revenue, reduce costs, and improve collaboration in today's increasingly competitive business world. Now, let's see why we need Lean Six Sigma after all. Lean Six Sigma helps the organization make more money by improving customer value and efficiency. Generally, this methodology focuses on improving quality, that is, reducing waste and variation, by helping the organization to produce products better, faster, and cheaper. Many companies choose to ignore the importance of quality in their regular operations and product offering. It is important to outline the impact that this ignorance will have on the bottom line of such companies. On average, U.S. companies dedicate about 15% of their sales to resolve quality matters, issues, and bottlenecks. Let's try to understand what is Lean. Lean is a management philosophy, derived from the Toyota production system. It fosters a culture of continuous improvement, maximizing value, and minimizing waste, by focusing on a flow of high-value-added activities or processes. So, the key concept of Lean is the elimination of waste. Waste can be defined as anything that doesn't add value to the customer. An activity, or process, is only value-added when three conditions are met. The activity must transform the product or service. The customers are willing to pay for it, and it must be done correctly the first time. The Lean method ensures high quality and customer satisfaction. It helps in, reducing process cycle time improving product or service delivery time, reducing or eliminating the chance of defect generation, reducing inventory levels, lastly, optimizing resources for key improvements among others. So, it is a never-ending approach to waste removal, thus promotes a continuous chain of improvements. Lean is also sometimes seen as a set of tools, or methods such as value stream mapping, the 5 S's methodology, and the Ishikawa diagram. Lean is a culture of teamwork and continuous improvement, teaching people to identify and eliminate waste. This creates a more efficient process, in turn adding value. You should know that an important aspect of Lean is respect for people. So, this is a part of Lean leadership. Lean leaders motivate and coach people, helping them grow professionally and personally, and involve them in the improvement of the business. Now, let's answer a few questions such as what is Six Sigma? What do you mean by Six Sigma? And why is it called Six Sigma? Six Sigma at many organizations simply means a measure of quality that strives for near perfection. It can be called Six Sigma, or it may have a generic, 
or customized name for the organization such as operational excellence, zero defects, or customer perfection. So, it is a set of management tools and techniques, designed to improve business by reducing the likelihood of error. Six Sigma is a disciplined data-driven approach for eliminating defects in any process, from manufacturing to transactional and from product to service. Six Sigma helps in reducing the number of defective products or services provided. Evidently, Six Sigma increases revenue by enabling your organizations to do more with less. Greater customer satisfaction. Here is an example to show how it works. Lean and Six Sigma both aim to handle the waste. But what exactly is this waste? Waste is any step or action in the process that a user does not gain any value from. In short, things that users wouldn't want to pay for. By eliminating waste you get a process that is shorter, faster and you can do more with less. Let's take an example. Suppose the products need to be delivered to a supermarket. Why would a consumer want to pay extra for the additional truck that was required to deliver the goods to the supermarket just because the other one broke down? Now let's see, what are those types of waste? Lean waste can be divided into eight categories. Downtime is the acronym for the eight wastes. Let's have a look at each of them. Defects, this is the waste originating from a product or a service that fails to meet customer expectations. Overproduction, this is the waste created due to producing more products than required. Waiting, this can be time wasted waiting on information, instructions and equipment. Non-utilized talent or skills, this waste refers to the waste of human potential under utilizing capabilities and delegating tasks to people with inadequate training. Transportation, this waste refers to the excess movement of people, tools, inventory, equipment, and other components of a process than it is required. Inventory, this waste occurs due to having more products and materials than required. This can cause damage and defects to products or materials. Greater time for completion. An efficient allocation of capital and so on. Motion, this refers to the time and effort wasted due to unnecessary movement of people, equipment, or machinery. This could be sitting through inventory, double data entry and so on. Extra processing, or over-processing, it refers to more work, more components, or more steps in a product, or service than required. Now let's see how can Six Sigma act as a measure of process performance. Six Sigma can also be thought of as a measure of process performance, with Six Sigma being the goal, based on the DPMO. So, DPMO is defects per million opportunities. It is a measure of the number of errors occurring in a business, or process. And then a process may have several possibilities for error per occurrence. When we talk about yield, it is specified as a percentage of met commitments over the total number of opportunities. So, we must compute the total number of defects, the total number of opportunities, and the defect rate, to calculate the process sigma rating. Once the current performance of the process is measured, the goal is to continually improve the sigma level striving towards six sigma. Even if the improvements do not reach Six Sigma, the improvements made from Three Sigma to Four Sigma and to Five Sigma will still reduce costs and increase customer satisfaction. The term Six Sigma has a statistical meaning. If you assume that your business process operates like a normal distribution or bell-shaped curve, then there are certain assumptions that can be made. So, the process performs within about three standard deviations from the process average. If we define the quality of the process using upper and lower specification limits, then a Six Sigma process is one where the nearest specification limit is at least six standard deviations away from the average. It is clear that the number of standard deviations from the average and the nearest limit is also called the Sigma level. Sigma levels equate to a yield percentage or success rate. So, a Six Sigma process only has 3.4 defects for every 1 million times that you run the process. That is nearly perfect. The higher the signal level, the less chance of a failure in the process. This reduces waste, inefficiency, and ultimately the rework cost in the process which directly impacts the financial performance of a company. In order to do a Six Sigma project, we need a team. Six Sigma professionals exist at every level. Each level comes with different roles and responsibilities. White Belt, this is the most basic level and has a foundation level of lean Six Sigma knowledge. So, they can support the overall project but might not be a part of any Six Sigma project team. Yellow Belt, they assist on Six Sigma project teams. They help create processes mapped and gather data to be analyzed. They understand the fundamental tools and technique, and know how to apply to the project in a supporting role. Green Belt, they work much on the project. Green Belts are the employees, 
who take up implementation along with their other job responsibilities, operating under the guidance of black belts. Green belt would like to spend approximately 25-50% to of their time on the project. They have a strong level of Six Sigma knowledge. Black belt, they operate under master black belts, to apply methodology to specific projects. They devote 100% of their valued time to Six Sigma. They primarily focus on various project execution, and special leadership with special tasks. Whereas, champions and master black belts focus on identifying projects, or functions. Master black belts, they are identified by champions, act as in-house coaches. So, they devote 100% of their time, to such projects. Generally, they assist champions, and guide black belts and green belts. Apart from statistical tasks, they spend their time ensuring consistent application across various departments. Champions, they take the responsibility, for implementation across the organization, in an integrated manner. The executive leadership draws them from upper management. Champions also act as mentors, to black belts. Having a certification carries considerable weight in this competitive business community. It will give you an edge in obtaining career positions with some of the world's most respected companies. At Invensys Learning, we offer instructor live online Lean Six Sigma certification programs, which are designed for working professionals with varying levels of Six Sigma experience. Now, let's see what are the methodologies in Six Sigma. Six Sigma offers two types of improvement processes. One is DMAIC, and another one is DMADV. These two processes are appropriate for two different situations. Let's take a look at DMAIC. Define, measure, analyze, improve, and control are the five steps in DMAIC process. It is used for improving an existing process. If you have a process, and you want to improve that process, you want to bring the performance of the process to Six Sigma level, and for this case, you will be using the DMAIC process. If you want to design a new process, and you want to design in such a way that, this new process leads to Six Sigma performance, then in this case you will use the process called DMADV. So, DMADV is used for all new processes and not the existing processes. This is also called DFSS, or Design for Six Sigma. And the five steps in this process are define, measure, analyze, design, and verify. As you can see the first three steps are common in these both processes. And the difference lies in the bottom two processes. So, DMAIC is an improvement system for existing processes failing with some specifications and looking for incremental improvement. The acronym goes as define, measure, analyze, improve, control. These are the five project phases. Define, during this phase, the team defines the problem statement. Measure, here, the team maps the current process of the problem statement defined, gathers data, identifies and understands the root cause of the problem. Analyze, the team analyzes the data and the process to reduce the defect and wastes of the existing process. Improve, the moment the data and process is analyzed, the team moves forward to work on the defects by using the improvement ideas. Control, in the final phase, the team will document how the process improvements will be passed on to the employees, who work within that process. So, DMADV is an improvement system for developing new processes at Six Sigma quality levels. The acronym goes as define, measure, analyze, design, verify. During these five project phases, the team will define, here the project goals and deliverables are defined. Measure, once the goals are identified, the team will measure the factors that are critical to its deliverable. Analyze, here, the teams will analyze different process options that will best meet the required deliverables. Design, here, the team documents the detailed process that meets the deliverables. Verify, here, the team verifies that the goals and deliverables are achieved through the newly designed process. What are the benefits of Lean? How does Lean benefit in increasing revenue? When Lean was not introduced, which means processes were not improved. At that time, 200 loans were successfully funded every month. And Lean got introduced because of which processes were improved, then 600 loans were successfully funded every month. It is very much clear that an inefficient process leads to less revenue, and an efficient process with more funded applications leads to more revenue. Now, how does Lean benefit in decreasing costs? When Lean was not introduced, which means processes were not improved. At that time, two out of four computers had broken screens. And Lean got introduced because of which processes improved, then no computers had broken screens. It is very much clear that more defects lead to increased costs, and fewer defects lead to decreased costs. Now, how does Lean benefit in increasing efficiency? When Lean was not introduced, 
which means processes were not improved. At that time, one doctor could only see four patients successfully. And lean got introduced because of which processes were improved, one doctor could see nine patients successfully. It is very much clear that, decreased efficiency leads to less successful patient visits, and increased efficiency leads to more successful patient visits. At Invensys Learning, we offer instructor live online Lean IT Foundation certification, which is designed for working professionals. Get certified today, and stand out from the rest of the crowd. For more updates on trending technologies subscribe to Invensys Learning YouTube channel. Also, if you have any queries, share them with us in the comments section.